let's continue our uh, discussion about uh, group homomorphisms we defined kernels and images of group homomorphisms in the previous video so let me uh, do one immediate proposition following those definitions so before that let me recall um, define some well known uh, terms so let's say phi is a group homomorphism from g to g prime So let's say phi is a group homomorphism from G to G prime. I define phi is 1 1 or injective is also the word a word that we use. Injective if uh, if phi of a b equals phi of b implies a equal to. Okay, so this is uh, one way of writing this equivalently if a is not equal to b then phi of a is not equal to phi of b okay so this is actually nothing to do with a group homomorphism this is a purely set theoretic notion so its injective means two distinct elements map to two distinct elements similarly phi is on to or another word for this is surjective if image phi my notation was small i m ok so this is also a purely set theoretic notion image of the map is all of g prime ok so this is very simple but the proposition i want to do before continuing today is that phi is 1 1 if and only if kernel of phi is just the identity element of the group. So remember kernel is the set of elements of the group G which map to the identity element of group G prime. So, one oneness can be captured purely by looking at kernel of this. So, what is the proof of this? So, suppose so we have to prove two directions, right? Phi is one one if and only if kernel phi is eg. So, let's suppose phi is one one. Let's prove that kernel phi is eg. And on the other hand, let's suppose kernel phi is eg and prove that phi is one one. So, suppose first that phi is one one. And let uh, A be in kernel of phi. Then, by definition, phi of A is E G, right? Kernel of phi is by definition elements which map to E G. But we have already seen that phi of E G is same as, sorry, phi of E G prime, right? Phi of it is identity element of G prime. A being in the kernel means A maps to E G prime. But E G also maps to E G prime. That is a property of group homomorphism. But now phi is 1, 1 and phi of A is equal to phi of E G. So, A equals E G. Right? So, if A is in the kernel, A must be E G. Certainly, E G is in the kernel. That is always true because kernel phi is a subgroup. It contains identity element or more directly, identity element of the group maps to the identity element of the group G prime. So, kernel phi contains E G. And if anything else is contained in E G, sorry if anything else is contained in kernel phi it is equal to e g so kernel phi is simply e g so that we have shown so if kernel if phi is 1 1 then kernel of phi is e g so the next uh, direction this is the easy direction so suppose that kernel of phi is E G. So, we have now assumed that kernel of phi is E G. Kernel of phi is E G. So, we want to show that phi is 1 1. So, suppose what is 1 1? It means that if two things map to, if two elements map to the same element, they are equal. So, suppose phi of A 
is equal to phi of b. Okay, if phi of a is equal to phi of b, then phi of a times phi of b inverse equals identity of g prime, right? Because uh, phi of a, I'm simply multiplying by phi b whole inverse. So this is happening in g prime. If phi of a times equals phi of b, phi of a times phi of b inverse is e g prime. But phi of b inverse, remember by the property of a group homomorphism that we have studied earlier, phi of b inverse is nothing but phi of b inverse. Right? Phi of b whole inverse, when I write it like this, I mean phi of b inverse. That is minus phi of b inverse. But again, using the property of a group homomorphism, this is just phi of a b inverse. Right? Phi of a times phi of a b inverse, phi of is phi of a b inverse. And this is phi of okay. So now phi of a b inverse is in E G prime. That means a b inverse is in kernel phi. The definition of kernel phi is that it consists of those elements which map to the identity element of G prime. So a b inverse is in kernel phi. But note that kernel phi is in age is precisely E G. We have only one element in kernel phi. So that means a b inverse is E G because E G is the only element in kernel phi. So a b inverse must be in E G. But that means a equal to b because we can multiply by e b in b. So a b inverse is E G means a equals b. So we have started with phi of a equals phi of b and concluded that a equal to b. That means so phi is one. Okay, so checking if a group homomorphism is injective or not. In general, you have to check that no two distinct elements go to distinct elements. But the advantage with a group homomorphism is that all you need to check is the kernel. If kernel consists only of the identity element, it's automatically a one-one group homomorphism. Okay, so a group homomorphism is one-one precisely if kernel is the identity. Kernel is just the identity element. Now a very important definition. A, an isomorphism of groups is a group homomorphism So I'm introducing another word for you. An isomorphism of groups is a group homomorphism phi from G to G prime such that, or we such that phi is one one and on two. So a group homomorphism which is simultaneously one one and on two is a group isomorphism. Okay. So an immediate uh, so isomorphism of groups is a very very important concept of, of groups. It says that two groups are isomorphic when they are essentially same. If the two groups are isomorphic, we will consider them as same groups. F as far as group theoretic properties are concerned, there is no difference between them because they are bijective. There is a bijection between them. So this is simply saying that. Remember, I used the word bijective earlier. Bijective simply means it's one one and on two. So, because it's bijective, the sets are same, and because it's a homomorphism, multiplying two things here in one group is same as multiplying two things in the other group. So, as far as groups, uh, group theoretic properties are concerned, they are same. So, um, an exercise for you, which uh, I will not discuss in great detail, if phi from g to g prime is a group isomorphism then the map phi inverse remember that if it's a 
isomorphism it's a bijective map phi is a bijective map so there's a map which sends g prime to g namely phi inverse just the set theoretic inverse function so where does an element under uh, of g prime go under phi inverse you simply look at a pre image because there is exactly one pre image it's a well defined map the map phi inverse is also a group isomorphism if phi is a bijective map since phi is a bijective map phi inverse can be defined right that is because if uh, b is in g prime define phi inverse b equals a if phi a is b so you have g here g prime here a goes to b under phi right because it's a bijective map b has a pre image and it is exactly one there is exactly one pre image so i'll simply send b to a under phi inverse okay so if a goes to b under phi b goes to a under phi inverse so you can define it because it's a bijective map otherwise you can't define inverse and it is obviously a bijective map also because if phi is bijective its inverse image is not only defined but it's bijective so it's a bijective map to check that it's a group isomorphism we have to check that phi inverse is actually a group homomorphism and this i will leave for you to check so you have uh, again in the picture that i drew earlier you have two elements b1 b2 let's say which map to a1 a2 and you also have so i'm going to draw a bigger diagram so you have b1 b2 b1 b2 okay that's in g prime you have phi of this is a1 this is a2 this is a1 a2 a1 maps to b1 and uh, under uh, phi inverse it maps back to a1 similarly a1 a2 map to each other under phi and phi inverse but because phi is a group homomorphism a1 a2 maps to b1 b2 that is a property of group homomorphism but again by the inverse definition of the inverse image inverse function this must map to b1 b2 must map to a1 a2 so phi this is a this, this gives you an idea of how to check that phi inverse group is a group homomorphism so if you have a isomorphism of groups which is by definition a homomorphism which is bijective you have a in isomorphism in the opposite direction okay so group isomorphism is an important property because it allows us to uh, uh, consider two groups as same if their group theoretic properties are same we don't want to uh, think of them as different just because the names of elements are different or the way it is represented is different okay so we will uh, as the course progresses we will look at various examples of this but just to give you a very basic idea i want to consider uh, uh, one very simple example of group isomorphism or a few of them so let's take g1 to be 1 i minus 1 minus i so where uh, i was a square root of minus 1 so remember this we discussed uh, this came up earlier in our uh, videos this is a group consisting of fourth roots of unity so this is a subgroup of c star on the other hand let's consider g2 to 
टू बी वन ए ए स्क्वायर ए क्यूब वेर ए इज जस्ट अ सिंबल ओके मीनिंग इट हैज नो फर्दर इंटरप्रिटेशन इट इज जस्ट अ सिंबल इट्स नॉट अ नंबर और अ मेट्रिक्स और अ ऑपरेशन और फंक्शन और पेरमुटेशन एंड सॉन इट्स जस्ट अ सिंबल एंड द प्रॉपर्टी इज द प्रॉपर्टी दैट इट सैटिस्फाइज is okay so let me use e for the identity element a to the fourth is e so now g2 is a group it's a group because uh, it has identity it is closed under multiplication because a a squared is a cube b squared a cube is what is a squared a cube so just the exponential rules tell you it is a5 But a five is a four times a, right? And a four is e, so this is just e. So essentially, what we are doing is uh, exponents. So similarly, a cubed power four. What is this? Okay, this is a to the twelve, and that is a to the four cube. And that's also e. A cubed to the third. That's a to the ninth, so that's a to the eight times eight, so that's a. Okay, so using this very important property that this symbol satisfies, we can check that this is closed. These are just examples, but in general, any a power i is inside inside e a a squared a cube, and e is a power zero. Okay, because uh, you can basically divide i by 4 and then the remainder is what you get here because a power 4 is e so g2 is a group it's an abstract group in the sense that a is just a symbol with no meaning attached to it g1 is also a group but here there is a concrete meaning i is a square root of minus 1 i is a complex number i claim that g1 and g2 are G1 and G2 are isomorphic. Why is this? Let's just define a function. So remember, an isomorphism is so when I say isomorphic, so the word isomorphic, we say so just to so that there is I mean you, it's clear what I mean by this. We say G1 and G2 are isomorphic. if there is a group isomorphism okay this is just notation we say that two groups are isomorphic if there is a group isomorphism from one to the other okay in this now i come back to this example i want to say g1 and g2 are isomorphic so we have to exhibit an isomorphism so let's define an isomorphism so g1 is 1 uh, e 1 i minus 1 minus i so send 1 to 1 so i want to do from g1 to g2 i send 1 to e i to a minus 1 to a square minus i to a cube okay and one can check easily this is a group of isomorphism it is certainly a bijective function right because four elements here go to four distinct elements here g2 has four elements and everything is in the image no two elements map to same element so it is a bijection that is easy just from the definition it's also more or less easy it is a group homomorphism it is also easy to check this let me not write all the details but uh, just say how to check this for example where does i squared go what is i squared 
let's check that v of i squared is v of i times v of i right that is what a group homomorphism is supposed to do but v of i squared is v of minus 1 because i squared is minus 1 what is v of minus 1 in my notation it is in my definition it goes to i squared on the other hand what is v of i it is i this is a v of i is a so this is a times a that's a squared so this is okay I'll just check one more just for uh, your clarity. What is V of minus 1 times minus i? This is V of, so I'm multiplying these two elements minus 1 minus i. That is V of i, right? V of i is a. But what is V of minus 1 times V of minus i? V of minus 1 is a squared, V of minus i is a cubed a square times a cubed is a so that i have checked earlier so this is also okay so this can be checked to be a group isomorphism so that's not difficult g1 g2 are isomorphic groups but i want you to think about this carefully g1 is a concrete group it's a subgroup of complex numbers non-zero complex numbers it is fourth roots of unity so it has some meaning complex numbers have some other structure they have some geometric meaning and so on. Whereas the second group has no structure, no meaning other than whatever the group axioms give it. A is just a symbol and A4 is E. But G1 and G2 are isomorphic as groups. So in abstract group theory, we are only interested in the group theoretic properties of a set. So in, in the study of abstract groups, G1 and G2 are considered same. There is no difference between them. All the extra structure that G1 has is irrelevant as far as group theory is concerned. G1, G2 are isomorphic as groups, which is to say they are essentially same. There is no difference between them as groups. Okay. Also note that G2 is cyclic. G2 is a cyclic group. It is, in fact, G1 is also a cyclic group. Okay, cyclic group remember means there is an element which generates the group in g1's case i1 i generates the group i squared is minus 1 i cubed is minus i so g1 is cyclic in g2 a generates it so if two so g1 g2 are isomorphic and both are cyclic so it is not surprising there is an exercise which i will give you and um, i will let you do this on your own if g1 so now this is uh, not g1 so let's say g and g prime are isomorphic then so there are two exercises g is uh, abelian if and only if g prime is abelian g is cyclic if and only if g prime is cyclic. Okay, being cyclic or being abelian is a very group theoretic property. So if earlier my statement that if isomorphic groups are to be thought of as same, certainly I would expect that abelianness would be preserved under isomorphism. So if one is abelian, the other must be abelian. Otherwise, I can't think of them as two groups because abelianness is an important property of a group. If one group is abelian and another group is not abelian, I cannot think of them as same groups. Similarly, if one group is cyclic and another is not cyclic, I cannot think of them as cyclic. Uh, I cannot think of them as same. So if two groups are isomorphic, one is cyclic if and only if the other is cyclic, one is abelian if and only if the other is abelian. So again, I should remark that this symbol here means if and only if. I have been using this perhaps without uh, saying what it is. It's if and only if. That means G is abelian if G prime is abelian and only if G prime is abelian. So in order to prove this, you want to show that if G is abelian, then G prime is abelian. Same, similarly, you want to show that if G prime is abelian, then G is abelian. Okay. So I will not do this exercise for now because it's 
uh, instructive to do this on your own and it's not difficult.